cosmetic laser and electrolysis can worsen autoimmunity. Estrogen can cause or worsen autoimmunity. Spironolactone can worsen autoimmunity, especially autoimmunity of the thyroid. Silicone implants can cause or worsen autoimmunity. Trauma, both mental and physical, can cause or worsen autoimmunity. My doctor and other doctors like my doctor who prescribe these drugs to people who have undergone trauma will undergo cosmetic laser and electrolysis, might undergo several different surgeries, might undergo um, silicone implants. These doctors are setting patients up for autoimmunity, or if they already have autoimmunity, they are setting these patients up for guaranteed worsening symptoms. So here we have contraindications for electrolysis and for laser. For laser, autoimmune diseases of the skin, like vitiligo and eczema, which I have, are contraindications. For electrolysis, hyperhypopigmentation problems, like vitiligo, are contraindications. I have gotten both electrolysis and laser, um, and they did not prevent me from doing so despite my vitiligo or um, other autoimmune conditions that were known at the time. They will allow people to do this regardless. Again, we see contraindication of vitiligo. Here we see lupus as a contraindication, which is just an autoimmune disease. Uh, there's no reason this should be the only autoimmune disease that would be contraindicated. Here we see a very small abstract. Unfortunately, I don't have the whole paper, but it talks about the Kogner phenomenon, which is a phenomenon where you have vitiligo in one part of your body, and then you have trauma to somewhere else, and then suddenly the vitiligo is also in that spot with the trauma. Um, and so laser and electrolysis cause damage to your body. It's how they remove the hair. They, they scar the, the body in a very specific point um, so that it can't produce hair anymore. Um, and due to that scarring af affected over the whole face, for instance, or the whole, the whole body, if you're getting, you know, laser hair removal done, you can cause large patches of vitiligo to then appear in those areas, which is why it's contraindicated. So this is a case study of a 28-year-old healthy woman who did laser hair removal and then uh, gained patches of white spots on her body um, following the laser hair removal. And this is something I experienced as well uh, with laser hair removal, and unfortunately those patches still persist. I'll show pictures of this patient's um, patches on their skin so you can understand what happens. And uh, these patches may never go away. Once you lose the, the ability to create pigment, um, it doesn't always return. So this might be permanent, might be semi-permanent, might start spreading from these spots over the entire body, um, which is seemingly what it seems to be doing in my case. Um, and of course it also is an indicator that you have some worsening autoimmune condition. So I would just like to briefly talk about trauma and estrogen because these are two things that we know cause or worsen autoimmunity. We know this, it's not disputable. I will have mechanistic studies linked below. That means we have the actual mechanisms for which estrogen causes the autoimmunity. When you have the mechanism, it's, it's not a question of whether or not it will. It's this does and how much does it, right? And so um, uh, the, the same thing is sort of with trauma. We don't necessarily have the, the mechanism for which mental trauma causes autoimmunity, but we do know that chronic stress can cause autoimmunity, and there are mechanistic studies showing how, say, cortisol might be in some way related to uh, autoimmune disorders. So um, these are not really disputed. I'm not going to go over the individual medical studies for those reasons. I will have some linked below, but you should do your own research as always. Um, but I'm not going to go over them because it's a waste of your time and mine. This is not um, a controversial topic, so no point in going over them. Okay, so I'm going to have two studies here for thyroiditis. The first one is a cool study done on male rats who were fed spironolactone. And what they found was this lowered the T4 that was uh, in the serum. So lowered serum concentration of T4, so less free T4, which made the TSH rise to attempt to compensate 
which caused the thyroid to enlarge or become a goiter um, and and so it increased the thyroid gland in both size and activity that's really bad for autoimmunity but it also is bad for thyroiditis autoimmunity specifically because your thyroid's already not functioning right so this is like just really a damaging drug to people with thyroiditis and uh, my doctor diagnosed me with thyroiditis. The doctor who prescribed this drug to me diagnosed me with thyroiditis. Um, this next study that we have here, I'm just going to read the conclusion real quick. The obtained results indicate that spironolactone may exert an unfavorable effect on progression of autoimmune thyroiditis in men. So we have many studies like these that show that men, whether you're a rat or you're a human, taking this drug when you have diagnosed thyroiditis is not only damaging to the thyroid itself but also to the autoimmune condition um, so my doctor was directly hurting me in this way uh, my doctor was also directly hurting me by prescribing me estrogen in this way so here we have a study that says there's no real convincing data to show that um, silicone breast implants or any silicone implants cause autoimmunity or worsen autoimmunity, but in the same abstract, they also say that um, it remains to be determined whether such illnesses in these patients are coincidentally associated or secondary to the implants. So they're, they're not sure if it's a coincidence or, or what's going on. Um, what they're saying is they need more data, but um, even in this study that shows, that says that, no, there's no, there's nothing here. They're saying that Something's occurring, we just don't know if it's coincidence or what, right? Uh, which is fair. But then we have other studies um, that uh, say, like this one says, silicones can migrate from the implant through the body and can induce chronic inflammatory uh, processes, which, um, which, I mean, that could cause or worsen autoimmunity for sure. And then we have this one, which is pretty damning. There have been more than 80 cases reported in the medical literature of varied systemic autoimmune illness in patients who have had various foreign materials placed in the breast. Further experimental work is necessary on the bioreactivity of silicone. Patients with autoimmune disease, once identified, must be carefully evaluated by physicians who are experienced in the treatment of autoimmune disease. An association between crystalline silica and autoimmune disease has long been recognized. There is evidence of cellular and humoral immune responses to silicone in vivo, but the role of these responses in the development of connective tissue disorders has not been determined. So they don't know, they haven't determined it, but there's something going on here. Further studies are necessary to elucidate the role of silicone, if any, in the pathogenesis of autoimmune connective tissue disease. So there are some meta-analyses of breast implants or any silicone implants um, showing that they don't really increase autoimmunity or don't increase it enough to be statistically significant. Um, but then I found this study that says meta-analyses of these studies cannot remedy their underlying methodological weaknesses. So what they're talking about here is, and then they, before they say, uh, nor were studies properly designed to address whether an atypical syndrome might develop in women with breast implants. And they say, samples were too small to rule out an increase in rare connective tissue diseases. So they had some methodological weaknesses um, in these original studies that the meta-analyses came from. So there, therefore, the meta-analyses might be missing something by taking all these studies that seem to have this underlying weakness. It's just something to keep in mind. Okay, then we have this study, which is just an abstract. I don't have the whole paper, but... Um, I just want to read to you what the, this abstract says. It's actually pretty damning, I would say. In vivo and in vitro studies, case reports, and population studies show that 1. Silicone is immunogenic. 2. Silicone is biodegradable and transported via the reticuloendothelial system to distant locations. 3. Silicone breast implants leak. And in turn, silicone migrates outside the breast tissue. 4. 
Case reports and population studies document an autoimmune reaction and in immunological dysfunction in patients with silicone breast implants. Five, these immunological abnormalities and symptoms are reversible upon removal of the breast implants in 50 to 70% of the cases. The criteria to establish medical causation are defined and based on those criteria. It is concluded that silicone breast implants cause immunological disease. So here I come, a very sickly person, to a doctor. This doctor diagnoses me with an immune condition that this doctor is familiar with. This doctor diagnoses me with this through ultrasound and blood tests. There is no doubt that I have this autoimmune condition. This doctor then prescribes me two drugs that will almost certainly worsen this autoimmune condition. Additionally, I have a well-documented history of psychiatric illness. And this doctor is prescribing me hormones so that I can medically transition to become my true self. Additionally, this doctor knows that I will undergo some amount of laser hair removal or electrolysis, which is known to increase autoimmunity and worsen conditions that I know I have and that this doctor knows I have, like vitiligo. This doctor was doing everything they could to worsen my condition they diagnosed me with. And yet no lawyer will take my case. At least not yet. I'm still working on it. But if no lawyer will take this case, it's going to be really hard for anything to change here because no lawyer will do what is necessary. This is an open and shut case. My doctor diagnosed me with something and then prescribed me things that would worsen the diagnosis and which harmed me in other ways as well. Even assuming that that diagnosis wasn't something I had, they were still worsening my health conditions due to the fact that they weren't treating my mental disorders and they were instead prescribing me estrogen to transition to a woman, which is something that can't be done and is unhealthy. This is a really grim situation. And in this video, I know I talk about my old, my old friend who killed himself a lot. Um, I don't do this to use him and his death to push my agenda. I, I do it to remember that this is a human who died um, because of doctors prescribing him drugs that could only have hurt him, both mentally but physically, physically knowably hurt him. They are not careful. <laughs> They're the opposite of careful. And people are going to die from this. There's no doubt about this.